Hi everyone, and welcome back to Life in Tech with SK. I'm SK, and today I'm gonna to cover my computer science journey at VITS. So let's get to it. Hi guys, before we get started, if you guys like these kinds of videos, be sure to subscribe because I've got a lot of content planned for this year, so stay tuned. So first, what is computer science? So computer science is exactly what it sounds like. It's the study of computers, but well, the science of computers to say. And in my degree in particular, we had to discuss how computers worked and then how algorithms worked. And then we had to also prove mathematically how the algorithms worked and then how efficient they were. And if that sounds very math heavy, that's because it was. I would say that the degree at WITS was definitely more math than coding. And because of that, if you don't enjoy math, then I wouldn't actually recommend doing computer science at WITS for you. Whereas I really enjoyed, well, I did enjoy it before the degree math, but I still very much enjoy coding, which is why I got into the degree myself. So in this video, I'm just gonna discuss my journey from high school, from when I chose my subjects back in grade 10 when I was 16, all the way up to the end of my degree, including the subjects inside of the degree. So rewind the clock back to 2016, I had to go choose my three subjects, alongside the staple math, English, and first additional language that you had to take. So initially I wanted to take EGD, which stood for Engineering, Graphics, and Design, Accounting, and Physics. But then my brother chose accounting and I was like, you know what, dude, we've been doing the twin thing our whole life. We're not doing it again. I'm sorry. I'm picking different subjects to you. I gotta go my own way. So I looked at my other options and my options were between art, geography, history and IT. So I chose IT because alongside EGD, I also wanted to work with computers in future. So that gave me the opportunity to do so. And time skip a couple of years to 2018. Then I matriculate and my marks kind of look like this. Let me check here. So I got a 72 for EGD, a 71 for IT, a 94 for math score, and an 82 for physics, which got me my bachelor's degree pass. Which also helped with the university admission because they required pretty high APS scores, but we'll go into that. So now it's time to start looking for universities. And for me, I had three universities that I was looking for. It was UCT, which stood for the University of Cape Town. UP, which was the University of Pretoria, and WITS, which was the University of Witwatersrand, which was in Joburg. So for me, I judged the university a lot on how hard it was to get into a degree. And WITS was by far the hardest in terms of requirements. So WITS required you had a, a APS, which was an uh, acceptance point score of 44 or more, and you had to get a math score score of 70 or more. UP wasn't that high, it required that you had an APS of 30, so you could have got, I think, all 60s and you would have been fine. Um, and then you would have had to get 60% in math score or more to get in. And UCT, at the time I couldn't find a computer science degree, which I can now, so at the time I actually just applied for computer engineering at UCT. Now my dad wanted me to be an engineer, but I didn't really enjoy physics as much as I did coding, which is kind of what I thought engineering would be all about. So I opted more for the scientist route, which I was very happy to do. Uh, he wasn't really happy at the time, but you know, you know, he lived. Um, so eventually, long story short, I did get accepted to this at for computer science, which I was very grateful for at the time. So now let's go through each year and each subject that I covered in each year. So for the first year, I'm actually going to go very in depth um, on like the subjects that were chosen. And then the next year, I'm just going to give the mark and then the mark, the course, and then what the course was about. So hopefully that will just shorten down on time. So in the first year, you do introduction to algorithms and programming, which kind of get, which is basically your first look at making code and algorithms that computers can you know read and understand and give you an output for. You also do information systems 1A, which is a computer course. It kind of discusses how computers are used in a business context. You then had basic computer and organization one, or BCO as we called it, which covered how computers use logic gates and binary to perform operations. You then had calculus and algebra one. I can't remember which one is in first or second semester, but calculus covered your basic, you know, derivatives and integration, and algebra was just your standard algebra. Um, we then had computational and applied maths called CAM, which was all year round, but they broke it up into sections so that you know it was easy to digest. And in first semester, we had optimization and another course I can't remember, but I just remember our lecturer had a very French accent. Instead of whenever you'd finish a calculation, and instead of just going like you know, as you can see, this is correct, you'd be like, convince yourself that this is correct. I digress, it was a fun time, but I hadn't digressed. So the overall subject of CAM was basically to discuss how computers apply math practically. 
because they're basically working ones and zeros, so they tend to take shortcuts in some cases. For example, we learned that for infinitely reoccurring numbers, computers will end up chopping off at some stage because they don't have infinite bits to display that number. Okay. okay. But we learned that and then a lot more. So in first semester, let's go through the marks. Um, I got a 90 for introduction to algorithms and programming, 80 for information systems 1A, 84 for basic computer organization 1, and 72 for calculus. I'll cover my overall mark for CAM at the end. However, I will say I am a computer science nerd, but taking IT in high school actually really carried me through my first semester of my degree. Because when you get to your degree, they assume that no one's ever coded before, or at least for fits, they assume that no one's ever coded before. So for me, it was more so refining the coding skills I'd learned in high school rather than relearning the ones that I already done. So I would actually really recommend doing IT in high school if you're looking at doing a degree in computer science or any other coding degree when you get to university. The next semester I got a 74 discrete computational structures or DCS as we called it. Man, this course was hard man. This course was hard because we had to do state machines and the math behind it and eventually I ended up getting lost and the math kind of went over my head. So I didn't do as well as I did in the other subjects. Um, I then got a 94 for introduction to data structures and algorithms, which was kind of the sequel to information to or intro to algorithms and programming. Both really well taught courses, I must say, which allowed me to do well. Um, I got a 72 for information systems 1B, which was very different to 1A. 1A was very theory based, but 1B was actually when we started coding some apps in Visual Studio. Um, it, the lecture was very intent on making sure our code was very readable. So not, to, not just that it works. So you would end up, you know, finishing your work and then you'd have to refine it. You'll make sure that things are named correctly so that you'd be happy. You know, we didn't really like it. We hated it for it, but in hindsight, it was some pretty good teaching. Um, I then got an 80 for algebra and then I finished CAM off with a 72. Now we get into the real math and computer science heavy part of the degree, which was my second year. In this year, you didn't get an elective, so information systems 1A and 1B dropped away. Instead, you got strictly math and computer science courses all the way through. So this was the hardest year by far. First off, this year kicked off during COVID. That was the start of the year. And then the courses themselves were also like extremely difficult. So this time I'm actually gonna go from lowest mark to highest mark instead of going from semester to semester. And I'm gonna start off with, oh, well, we had 11 courses this year. The first year we had nine, the final year we had eight. So first off, we have intro to mathematical statistics, which I got a 68, which 62 for. Um, you know, this one really kicked me towards the end of the year because I struggled to pay attention to the final, de the final details like when it comes to questions. So that was just my bad. Um, but it was just standard statistics all the way through. So there was nothing really complex, not nothing complicated if you understood what you were doing. Essentially, um, next was 68 for linear algebra. Um, this was some crazy math. Like this math started going over my head. Like I was getting really lost. We started talking about algebra in different dimensions. So I was just lost for real. We move on to a 70 for abstract maths. And I kid you not, I can't tell you what this course was about. I can't remember at all, honestly. I just remember a lot of symbols, unfortunately. Um, I then got a 71 for computation and applied maths. Again, we just covered deeper how computers do math. And for some reason we had physics um, or Lagrangian mechanics more so is what it was called. I hated it so much. Like we struggled so bad. It was like jumping from matric to second year physics without the first year physics. And then they flipped the logic of physics. It was so bad. I, I never want to do that again. Um, anywho, things now get you with an 82 for analysis of algorithms. It was a single semester course, which covered the efficiency of certain algorithms, like sorting ones, sort for the win, by the way. Um, then we had 83 for computer networks, which was a theory heavy course on exactly that. We just discussed how computers interlinked and communicate to each other at different layers. So we then have an 85 for basic analysis, which was a maths course, which unfortunately can't remember as well. Sorry guys. Um, we had an 86 for database fundamentals, which was a computer science course, which kind of just covered the basics of optimizing it, like databases and how they work essentially. Um, I got an 86 for the prequel to abstract maths, which was called transition to abstract maths. Unfortunately, I just messed up the transition. No cap. I'm not a DJ. Don't look at me. Um, coming to the last two, we have a 92 for multivariable calculus, which was a very, very interesting course, essentially like first year calculus, but instead of just using one dimension X, we used X and Y. Um, the lecturer was very, very passionate about it. So I really enjoyed it because he really taught with some real, 
you know, some real passion in it, you know. Um, and then we come to the last one, which was the best mark of my degree, which was a 96 for mobile computing. It was a very practical course. It kind of just covered the, um, basically coding mobile apps using Android Studio. Um, the final project was kind of in tandem with the database fundamentals one. So it was really cool. Now let's do the final year where we drop all the maths and all we do is focus on computer science. This was my favorite year by far. Um, this year I had eight courses, whereas last year I had 11. So if we're gonna do it in the same order of low to high, I got a 67 for parallel computing, which although I like the concept, which was basically discussing and understanding how computers share resources amongst the different processes, because your computer has multiple processes running at the same time all the time, and you don't want it to negatively interfere with each other. Um, really cool in concept, but I really struggled with the execution. So I only got a 67 for that. Um, next we have machine learning, which I got a 75 for that. This course kind of brought together the things we learned in statistics and calculus, and basically taught us how to make a computer come to a decision based on the information it was given, um, or AI as we call it nowadays. Um, moving on, I had operating systems and system programming three, which I got an 84. This covered extensively how your computer uses and moves memory around at the lowest levels so that you know, you can get information transferred between different applications and even within the same application. Um, I didn't enjoy it that much, but I understood it, which helped me get an 80 for it. So tied with each other, we have software design, which was a theory focused course, which covered the software design principles we actually had to implement in the next semester for our project. And we also have computer graphics and visualization, which was a very practical course, but it basically taught us how we can use math to draw objects onto the screen. Um, we use JavaScript for this, but it also covers stuff like lighting, perspective, uh, rasterization, etc. Um, at the end of it, we actually had to make a game based on these principles, no physics, which is kind of difficult, but you know, we pulled through in the end. Um, we got an 84 for both of those, uh, software design and CGV, well, computer graphics and visualization, I got an 84 for both of those. Um, next we have our software design project, which we actually got an 88 in. The reason I say we is because it was actually a group project for the whole semester for that consisted of eight of us. Um, it was actually really tricky at the start because it's hard to get eight people, eight strangers actually, to work together efficiently and effectively, but we pulled it off in the end. Coming down to the last two, we have a 90 for advanced analysis of algorithms, which took over from the previous year's analysis of algorithms, which covered like, you know, the efficiency of algorithms. And, you know, this year we, you were kind of given an algorithm most of the time. I can't remember the full course, but you were given the algorithm and you kind of had to show and prove mathematically how efficiently that algorithm would run, which was kind of fun. Um, last but not least, we have formal languages and automata. I really like this course. I got a 95 for this course. Um, this course was good because it was kind of like puzzle solving. You know, they would give you a state machine and then you would kind of have to prove and like, you know, describe what language it's written in, which was, it's kind of hard to describe if you haven't done it, but I really enjoyed it. So, you know, I think other people would enjoy it too. And that about does it for my degree. Uh, if you couldn't tell, I really enjoyed my degree, which allowed me to graduate with distinction. Uh, got, my, my, got my degree here. Yeah, 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 it, it is bachelor science. <laughs> um you know and i'm very grateful for that um i didn't go to do my honors like a lot of my my friends did uh, just personal financial reasons but right now i just i just want to code man okay we're almost done Thanks for watching to the end of the video, everyone. I hope you guys got a better understanding of a computer science degree, or at least one from bits. Um, and maybe you want to do it yourself. If you do, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, honestly. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Next one, we talk tech. So I'll see you there.